Let's talk politics. Former President Donald Trump gaining some ground in a brand new post-indictment poll with a wide double-digit lead over Ron DeSantis, who is making his message clear about his plans for the swamp. It's worse today than it's ever been, by far, uh, and, and that's a sad testament to, to the state affairs of our country. But even if you're successful at draining it, the next guy can just refill it. So I want to break the swamp. That's really what we need to do. So how do you feel about Governor DeSantis's message as opposed to Donald Trump? And how about Governor Chris Christie? He is also running for the GOP nomination. Governor, great to see you on the couch. All right, thank ABC you. ABC freed you up to become president. That was it, nice it of them. It was very nice to let me out of my contract to run for president. It was so, nice. How, your, your take on, on Governor DeSantis's take on the swamp? Well, look, I, I think that there's always going to be that problem. You know, I had it when I was governor of New Jersey for eight years. <clears throat> you know, you get a, a bureaucracy that's stuck, but what it takes is leadership to move it. Um, and you have to move those people and either physically get them out or have them change their attitudes. And that's about leadership. And we did it in New Jersey in a place where, you know, there's a million more Democrats than Republicans and a completely Democratic legislature. So it can be done, but you have to show strong leadership and not just talk about it, but actually do. On the Democratic side, Bobby Kennedy has a different message than Biden does. On the Republican oh, side, man. what is your message compared to Donald Trump's? How are you different? Uh, different in a lot of ways. First off, you know, the drama that he's created over the course of the last seven years for the Republican Party has just led to losing, Ainsley. I mean, lost in 18 in the House, lost in 20 in the Senate, lost the White House in 20, lost two more governorships in 22 and a Senate seat in 22. And a real thin margin in the House, we see that's what's doing to us. First of all, we got to show how we can win independent voters again. And when the president was asked that by Brett Baer the other night, he said, well, I'm going to win suburban women by telling them that I actually won the election in 2020. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, like, uh, the, the women I know are not going to be convinced to vote for him in 2024 because he's saying he still won the election in 2020. He's a backwards-looking candidate, and he's angry. He feels like he wasn't treated fairly. But he hasn't treated us fairly either, Ainsley, because the stuff he did um, at Mar-a-Lago with the documents, all he had to do was return them. Right. If he returned them, we wouldn't have this indictment, we wouldn't have this problem. And now America's going to have to go through an indicted president, and that's sad. Well, it, you know, and it's all coming up somewhere around the election. What do you make of uh, Donald Trump then telling Semaphore regarding those plans and the stuff he waved around? Well, those were a golf course plan. Well... I think he said it was bravado. He said which, that too. Right, which is, which is knowing him for 22 years is Trumpies for I lied. Um, I wasn't really waving around that. I lied, and, and you just have to accept that. Uh, look, uh, when he gets back into a corner, and I've seen this over 22 years, when he gets back into a corner, he makes up another story. When his tax returns in 2016, um, all of a sudden there was this legal advice that he couldn't release you know, his tax returns right. as long as he was under audit, and he's always been under audit, right? So... You know, I've seen this act before, and look, the American people, I think, have grown tired of it. And while the poll numbers are still good right now, that's because we haven't engaged in a campaign yet. We're going to engage in a campaign. Um, we're going to engage in debates, um, the first one here on Fox. And the Republican primary voters have a right for every candidate who wants the nomination to get up on that stage and allow them to compare against each other. And if you, you know, if you're Donald Trump and you're so perfect and strong about your record, well, you shouldn't have any problem getting up there and defending it. But you did, you did think, yeah. you did think uh, though, the Russia thing was a, a trumped-up thing. That I, I said it right from the beginning, right Brian. Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. Look, so, I was in that campaign in 2016, and, and I knew there was no way that that campaign was colluding with Russia. Um, it was, and, and the problem there was not only Jim Comey, who was dishonest and I think should have been prosecuted, um, but secondly... Jeff Sessions coming in and recusing himself was just an act of political cowardice. And so the president was ill-served by the For FBI two and director. And a half years. Right. And by the FBI director, he kept, and I recommended to him during the transition that he fire Jim Comey. I had worked with Jim. I knew Jim well. And I said, you should fire him now. He refused that advice. He got bad advice. You should have been the chief of staff. Well, he offered it to me in 2018, and I turned it down. And, and the reason I turned it down was because I just didn't believe he wanted to hear the truth. You know, and I, look, for everything anybody can ever say about me, I say exactly what I think, and that's the kind of advice I give. And when I told him the kind of advice I thought he was going to need, I could tell it wasn't going to work that well. And I didn't want to go in there um, and create more tumult 
uh, he wanted somebody different, and he obviously went with Mick Mulvaney for a short period of time, and then and then with Mark Meadows. Would it work to your benefit not to have him on the stage in August for, to be able to shine? No, Brian. I want everybody on the stage. I think Republican primary voters deserve it. You know, if you want the nomination of our party, and the party has gone to great expense and trouble to set these things up, well, then you should be there. And I don't know why he's afraid. You think he's afraid? Oh, or I do. I think he's, he's afraid. He's got a 20-point lead. Why, why play the semifinals? Well, if you got a 20-point lead, turn it into a 30-point lead if you're going to if you're going to do point. so great, right? I mean, look, I had a 20-point lead in New Jersey before the first debates. After the, 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 the two debates we had, I had a 30-point lead. So if you got a 20-point lead, turn it into a 30-point lead. If you're confident in yourself right. and your story, then come out and tell it. And, and, and be challenged by people who want the job. And I think that's what the voters deserve to hear. And I think even people who voted for Donald Trump, and I voted for him twice, mm -hmm. even people who voted for Donald Trump, they're going to look, and if he's not there, they're not going to like it. Yeah. Okay. I think you're right. Thanks, Governor. So great to see all three of you and be, right. be right know. here on the curvy couch. It's, like the it's been a five-year, it's yes. been a five-year hit. Like so on radio, at least. That's right. I've yeah. been on radio, but and, and remote, but it's good to be here. Right. It's great to see all three of you. It's so much easier to say our names than Stephanopoulos. It goes oh, on yeah. forever. <laughs> Very hard. I had, to, I had to work on that. I just used George. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> just use first names. <laughs> yes, that's it. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.